Hi and welcome to Demon Questions from On Maths, where we go through all of the trickier types of GCSE questions that you might face. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin and welcome to episode 3 of Demon Questions. So, let's get started straight away. D&C grade question is coming up. It's actually, I think, our hardest yet. So, if you'd like to pause the video now and have a go. Okay, so this is very, very nasty uh, C grade question. Uh, it doesn't give you much in the question. It says the height of the square is 36 centimetres, and that's pretty much it. The important word here is the fact that it's a square so therefore this one is also going to be 36 centimeters there and whenever you see the word square try and think right okay if this one's 36 then this one's going to be 36 the numbers in the question are not helpful they are big therefore I will need to draw uh, a few uh, multiplication grids to help me out here so what I need to do first is realize that I'm going to need uh, the area of the circle. So area of circle and you need to know this formula off by heart. The formula is pi r squared. So I can ignore pi because it wants it in terms of pi. So I just leave the pi there. But I need to work out what r squared is. Now not only is this the height of the square, it's also the diameter of the circle. If I show that through here, just put a few dots, then the diameter of the circle is also 36 centimeters. Now if the diameter is 36, the radius will be 18, because the radius is half of the diameter. So it's pi times 18 squared. Now, I don't know off the top of my head what 18 squared is, so if I draw a little grid for 18 squared, let's try and make it big enough. So, uh, hopefully, this will be big enough. So, 18 times 18, so 18 is 10 and 8, and the other 18 is also 10 and 8, so therefore, that's 100. 10 times 10, that would be 80. That will be 80, and that will be 64. When I add those up, I've got 100, 80, 80, and 64. Add the zeros and the 4 makes 4. Now this is tricky. Add the 8, you get 16. Add another 6 from 16, you get 22. I hope. So carry the 2, 2 goes in there, and add the 1 and 3, makes 3. So 18 times 18 is 324. Therefore, that is 324 pi. Okay. Uh, let's just check that. So that makes sense. Yeah. And it's always worth checking your answer there. So we've got the area of the circle, which is here. Now let's work out the area of the square. So I'm going to do this down here. So area of square. And that's simply 36 times 36. And again, I'll need to do a grid for that. So let's do the grid down here slightly bigger grid maybe, so maybe it's identical size. And this is obviously on the non-calculator paper because it says it in terms of pi. Normally that's indication that it's on the non-calculator. So 30 and 6 and 30 and 6. 3 times 3 is 9. Then there's two zeros there to put on the end. 3 times 6 is 18. My zero. Same here. And 6 times 6 is 36. So we've got 900. 
180 180 plus we've got 36 as well so that's a 6 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 3 is going to be 19 so it's a 9 carry the 1 then 9, 10, 11, 12 wow okay now first of all I want to work out the area of uh, all the shaded parts, all the parts around here. So if I get my highlighter, I want to include all of these as well for now. So area of all none circle. So area of all the parts of that diagram that aren't the circle is going to be the area of the square so that's the total area of all of this okay including the circle but we want to take away the area of the circle so take away that 324 pi what fraction of this is shaded well, the yellow bits aren't shaded on the diagram, it's just this one, so it's a quarter. So I want to say area of shaded is all of this but divided by 4. And I'm just going to divide each one by 4. So it would be 1,296 divided by 4 take away 324 pi divided by 4. When you divide something by 4, there's an easy way of doing it. You halve it, then halve it again. Okay, so if you can do that, if the numbers are nicer than this, then you might want to just halve it, then halve it again. Uh, I could do a bit of uh, long division for this. So why not? So it's 1,296. So 4s into 1 don't go, so therefore 4s into 12 go 3. 4s into 9 go twice, uh, leaving 1. 4s into 16 go 4. So it would be 324. Take away, and again I'll do some long division. Three, uh, the bus stop method. And I don't need to worry about the pi. If I divide this number by 4, uh, and just put pi at the end of it, that's absolutely fine. So 4s into 3 don't go, 4s into 32 go 8, and 4s into 1 go 1. So that's 81 pi. Therefore my answer is 324 take away 81 pi. So a nice easy question to get us started. <laughs> a bit of sarcasm there. That is a difficult question, um, and I can totally understand why you look at that and go, there's no possible way of me understanding that. I've actually picked a, um, a, a question which, which had quite high numbers. On the website and in your exam, I believe the numbers would be a lot, more, a lot nicer to do. In fact, um, one of the past papers that, I, that inspired me for that question the numbers were a lot easier, you didn't need to do long multiplication, long division. But there's an increasingly um, uh, movement from the exams to get you to do long multiplication especially, um, and uh, so that's why I've sort of done the worst case scenario for that question. Let's move on to our B grade question, which I'm fortunately, all three questions today are not the easiest in the world, so let's have a look at it. So, algebraic triangle area in a square, nice and easy. If you'd like to pause the video now and have a go. Okay, so, again, you know, not the easiest question in the world, because there's horrible algebra all the way around this question. The first thing to do with this question is to understand what the heck is going on. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the area of the triangle, but I'm not looking for a number, I'm looking for an expression. 
So that means it will be something like 3x plus 4 or something, okay? So there's a bit of a hint there that it's just we're looking for a coefficient of x squared for our answer. Okay, so a little bit of a hint of what we'll end up with. The same as before, so the same as the first question, we are looking to work out a big area and take away the bits of the big area that we don't want. You can't necessarily work out what this triangle is directly or it's not necessarily easy to. So again, I'm going to be looking at working out the areas of this, of the shaded parts first, taking those away from the area of the square and it will leave the area of the triangle and I think that's the easiest way of doing this question. So if I label these A, B and C and we work out the areas of each of those triangles then we work out the area of the whole square and then we take the triangles A, B and C away from the whole square and it will leave us this one. So if I start off with triangle A so let's start off with A. Now the area of a triangle, which I'm just going to call A, is half times base times height. So it's half, and we need to know what the base and the height are. Now, it doesn't matter which one's the base, which one's the height. What matters is they have to hit each other at right angles. So this, the X there, and this length here hit each other at right angles. So that's our base and that's our height. Okay, This one's nice and easy. This one's just x. So if I put that in, that's just x. Now this one doesn't have a label, but it does say in the question that m, uh, where is it? m is the midpoint. So if it m is the midpoint and the whole distance is 12x, which it says on the other side of the square, then this one is going to be 6x. So it's going to be times 6x. Now when I do x times 6x, I get 6x squared. So let's put that in. So that's 6x squared. And half of 6x squared is just 3x squared. Okay, one down, two to go. For b, I'm going to set up the same formula, because it's still a triangle. Half times base times height half times, now let's have a look, the base and the height are these two because these are the ones that hit each other at a right angle. This one here at the bottom is just going to be 12x. Again, uh, like the last question we did, it says it's a square, so this one here is going to be 12x. So I'll call that the base, 12x. And like before, this one is 6x because that's a midpoint, and therefore half of 12x is 6x. Now, something I can do is I can halve one of these ones and then times these two together. So I'm going to halve the 12 to make 6x. So you don't have to ha always halve your answer, you can just halve one of the lengths. And 6 times 6 is 36 and x times x is x squared. Okay, nearly there. On to C. Now C is a slightly hard one, okay, because actually we don't have any indication of what this length is. Well, actually we do. So let's worry about setting up the formula first. So area is half times the base times the height. And again, the base and the height hit each other at right angles, so let's see which one's the base and which one's the height. Well, this one here and this one here hit each other at right angles, because it's a square and obviously a right angle there. So let's call this the base, so 12x. Now, it doesn't tell us how far along the square this bit is, this point here is. It doesn't say it's halfway doesn't say it's a third of the way. But we can come up with an expression for dealing with what this is. If the whole thing is 12x and this bit here is x, that would mean that this is 11x because 11x plus the x there makes 12x. So this is going to be 11x. 
I'm going to do the same as before. I'm just going to halve the 12x to make 6x. So 6x times 11x. Make sure when you do that you don't halve both of these. You just halve one of them. And 6 times 11 is 66. x times x is x squared. Okay, we've got somewhere. Now, I said that what we're going to do is work out the area of the whole square and take away a, b, and c. And that's what we need to do. So, I'm going to have to work out the area of the square. So the area is, obviously, 12x times 12x, which is 144x. So, area... Oh, shaded. Uh, let's call it shaded triangle to make it absolutely clear. So the area of the shaded triangle is 144x take away then the sum of all of these. And I've written 144x, obviously that's 144x squared. Because I've done 12 times 12 is 144, x times x is x squared. Oh. Tell you what, that's the first mistake in the demon question so far, I think. Although, probably there's going to be comments that have made a few other ones. Hopefully not. So, 3x plus 36x squared, I should say, plus 66x squared. Okay, so that would leave this triangle here. If I work out the area of the whole thing, take away the shaded ones, all I'll be left with is this shaded one here. So, 144x squared, take away, and now I need to add these together. So I could do it over here, why not? 66, uh, 36, and 3. 6 plus 6 is 12. Uh, and that plus 3 would be 15. Carry the 1. Uh, 9 plus 3 is, uh, sorry, 6 plus 3 is 9, plus the 1 is 10, so that's 105. So it'd be 144x squared, take away 105x squared. And this time I can just do this in my head. 144 take away 100 is 44, then take away 5 is going to be 39x squared. So my answer here is 39. Check my working out. So uh, these 12 plus 3 is 15. That works out. That makes sense. Uh, take away the 100 is 44. Take away the 5 is 39x squared. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> We've made it. Okay, so that is not an easy question. But when you realise that sometimes when it asks for the shaded bit, you work out the ones that aren't shaded, um, then that will help you dramatically with that question. Having said that, as I said, it's, it's definitely not the easiest question we, we've uh, had on Demon Maps. I think both of these questions have been the harder to, hardest to by a, quite a stretch, I'd say. Let's move on, dare we, to the uh, A and A star grey question. This one is not as tricky as the other two that we've just gone through. Um, it is a uh, quadratic solving. So if you'd like to pause the video now and have a go. Okay, so what we've tried to do with um, with these uh, demon questions is to put a little bit of a, a twist on um, on topics, um, and the way you're used to seeing this is uh, an x squared term, an x term, and a number term, and then just use the quadratic formula. The difficulty we have here is that we don't have this set out the way that that you would be used to. However, there's just one simple thing that we can do, and all I'm doing now is just copying down the question. There's one simple thing that we can do that will sort this all out for us. The thing that we do is we times everything in the question by y squared. Now, 
If we look at that, 6 divided by y squared, and we're times it by y squared, we'll just end up with 6. 5 divided by y times y squared. So you imagine there's a y squared at the top now. So 5y squared over y will just leave 5y. And then minus 4 times y squared will be 4y squared. 0 times y squared is just 0. So you can see here now we've got something that looks a little bit more familiar. Something else we can do is one of two things. We can times all of these by minus 1 to make this one positive or we can just move these across to the other side. So add 4y squared minus 5y take away 6 both sides. You'll end up with uh, 4y squared so a positive 4y squared a negative 5y and then a negative 6. The reason why some people do that is they like the a on this to be positive. It works out even if it's negative but for some reason people like this one to be positive. Um, to me it, it, it doesn't really matter, I'd, I would just probably keep it this way. Um, but it, it's quite nice for people also to have this first. Right, now we need to know what the quadratic formula is, uh, and I'm doing this from memory. Let's try. So it's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Next year's students will have to know this off by heart. They're not given it in the formula sheet. So you can see here we need an a, a, b, and a c. So, which one shall I use? I think this one's nicer to use. I'm going to use this top one. So, for this top one, A is minus 4. B, B is 5. And uh, C is 6. Okay, and for this one, A would be 4, B would be uh, minus 5, and C would be minus 6. So if you want to use that one, feel free. So minus b, so it would be minus 5, plus or minus the square root, and I've made that a bit small, uh, 5 squared, so 25, uh, 4 times a, uh, which is uh, 4 times minus 4, which is minus 16. Uh, oh, okay. Let's work out the positives or negatives first, and then I'll uh, do the work now for that. We have one of these as negative, the a is negative, and then that is, oh, well, we have two, because the four is negative and the a is negative. Two negatives make a plus. So I know the answer is going to be positive, so I don't have to worry about negatives and positives anymore. The 4ac is four times a, which is four, and it's a minus four, but we've already dealt with that and then times the 6. 4 times 4 is 16 times 6 and I could do a little uh, a little one, why not? I'm not going to use the straight lines as I did before which is unfortunate. So it would be 60 to 36 that would be 96 so we know that's going to be 96 over 2a and 2 times uh, minus 4 is minus 8. Okay, and this is probably the reason why people like the a to be positive because then you won't get that negative down the bottom. I don't think that's a problem. And let's do a final bit of working out before we split this into two. Uh, so 25 plus 96, so uh, 6 plus the 5 is 11, uh, so that make that 101, and that will make that 121. Let's put this into 2, and let's make this one positive, so a plus, root 121 is 11. And 
and this one's go. Let's make this one a negative. So we'll call this x equals x equals minus five. Take away eleven over minus eight. Okay, so this is minus five plus eleven, uh, which is going to be the same as eleven take away five, which is six over minus eight. So that's going to be what minus. Uh, divide to bottom by uh, half to bottom, you get 3 over 4, so minus 0 0.75, 3 quarters. And this one is going to be minus 5, minus 11, which will be minus 16, over minus 8, which minus, so divided by minus is a positive, 16 divided by 8 is 2. So our answers are minus 0 0.75 and two, hopefully. <laughs> now, this probably, almost certainly, will be a calculator question. In fact, it says, give your answer to two decimal places. So it's just happened that this, uh, these numbers that we've used have worked out really nicely. To do this in the calculator, um, let's try and uh, show you. I've not done this before, but we'll give it a go. So, uh, Let's just oh, put that down there. Okay, so I'm going to get my Casio calculator out and I'm going to just type in the working out on here. So the first thing to do is press the fraction button on the calculator, and yours might not look the same as me, uh, as mine. And I'm going to type in uh, minus 5 and I'm going to put plus, uh, press the square root button, and I'll go right 5 squared minus, and I'm putting brackets, 4 times, and then I'm going to write minus, uh, what is it, minus 4 times 6, close the brackets, I'm going to click down, I'm going to say 2 times minus 4. Now press equals, and I have no idea whether you can see this, you probably can't, uh, if I angle this the right way. But anyway, if you can't, you can't. It says minus three quarters, and if you press S to D, you get 0 point, minus 0 0.75. But with these types of calculator, what you can do is go back, navigate with a little cursor key, which seems to take ages with the quadratic formula, press delete on the plus, and just put in a takeaway. So just before the square root, you press delete and you change it for a takeaway. If I press equals, it now says two, which are the two answers I've got. Chance are the answer you'll get is a really horrible number. The reason being is that if it's not a horrible number, if it is if they are integers, then it means that you could have solved it without uh, without using the quadratic formula. You could have just factorised it. So I'll probably look at, uh, into changing the website slightly to make it make it more uh, or less uh, integer-like numbers. Um, so there we go. That is it. That is it for that question, thankfully. So, nice, easy A, a stroke A star grade one to finish off, as long as you knew that you had to slightly rearrange the equation. You had to times each of the terms by y squared to make it into a nice y squared y number equals zero, and then you could solve it. Okay, so that is it, thankfully, for today's uh, um, demon questions from Mon Maths. Um, if you have your own demon questions, please feel free to send them along uh, and they might feature in uh, later episodes. Um, if you want to send us a demon question or have any comments or questions or anything else, and I've had a lot of good ideas uh, for the website. Um, talking about the website, uh, all of today's questions are on the website under Demon Questions 3 um, and you can also try all the demon questions like a lot of you have uh, that we featured completely. And we've got n nine questions so far, so three episodes of three. So there's nine questions on there so far. If you'd like to get in touch, uh, you can talk to us on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, or through our website. If you enjoyed today's video, please click uh, please click like. If you really enjoyed today's episode, please click subscribe. Thank you very much.